Hi, this is Mrs. La Barbara. This is AP Physics Chapter Six: Work and Energy, Video Three. Today's topic is work and energy with varying forces. Objectives are to know work is the area under F X graph. To understand that area is calculated by integral equation, and the slope is by differential equation. To understand that the difference between work done by a spring and work done on a spring. To be able to apply work energy theorem to solve varying force problems, first concept is work is the area under F X graph. As you can see, F versus X. Now, since work equals to force times distance, so force times distance in this case is area. So area is work. In, on the left it says the force is constant. On the right says when force changes. This is a special case of work done on a spring. Well, elongate the spring. Then this area equals one half k x squared. From regions we know this is the、um, equation for energy in the spring. The energy in the spring is coming from the work done on the spring. So the area is the work done on the spring. Let's see work done by varying force along straight line. So along a straight line, when the work is varying as a curve, the area still is the work. To figure out the area under the curve, we break the area into infinite number of little rectangles. So then we add all the area of rectangle together. For the rectangle for first one, that's equals to the length times width f a x times delta x a. Plus b, the area of F b times delta x b plus continuously to all the rectangles together. In the limit, that number of segments becomes infinite, infinitely large, and the width becomes infinitely small. This sum will become an integral. So work done equals the integral of f x. Times dx. F x is your height. Dx is your width. In a special case, when f x is constant, we can take it out. Then it's just f x times the width will becomes this case. Okay, on the right. Let's take a look. Work done on the spring. When you stretch the spring, you apply a force. F x equals k x according to Hooke's law. So this. F F X and X are in the same direction, so the work done equals to K X times D X. When you integrate this, this function becomes F a、uh, one half K X squared, and that is the area under this graph. Now let's see work done on a stretched spring. Instead from zero to X, you have X one to X two. In this case. We have a definite integral, so you end up with one half k x two squared minus one half k x one squared, and this on the graph is the area of a trapezoid. The work done is still positive when the spring is compressed because it's x squared. Let's take a look at this example. When you step on a scale. When a woman weighing six hundred newton step on a bathroom scale containing a stiff spring in equilibrium, the spring is compressed under her weight. Find the force constant and total work done on the spring during compression. So this is work done on the spring. The spring has energy. So in this case, you first you draw a situation, then you also have to define which direction is positive and which direction is negative. So if I have Up as positive, then my force has to be negative because my force is downward. So it's the displacement has to be negative. So k negative divided by negative give you a positive number. You can define as down as positive. You should have still have the same k. That's the k. What's the total work? Total work equals to one half k x two squared minus one half k x one squared. In this case, x one equals to zero. So you will have three joules. The work done equals to three joules. So three joules is stored in the spring. Work energy theorem for straight line motion with varying force. So with varying force, 
on the spring is a special case. But in general, AX equals the DVX over DT, that's a derivative. That's a tangent line, the tangent of a VT graph, right? Tangent line is the derivative. And derivative dvx over dt, you can change to dvx over dx times dx over dt. So we can change ax equals to vx times the derivative vx over dx. So total work if f equals to fx dx, fx equals to m times ax dx, and ax equals to vx dvx over dx. So this becomes m vx dv so this is just mathematical manipulation to give you uh, so that you can integrate because in this case f is a function of x it's not a function of t that's why you have to change ax as a function of x so this is how you change ax as a function of x then ultimately you change everything as a function of v Vx and dvx becomes one half mvx squared minus one half mvi squared. So v2 squared minus one half mv1 squared. As you can see in general, the work energy theorem still holds, right? Still holds even when, even when the force is changing. Let's take a look at this uh, example. Motion with varying force the work done by the spring okay so you have a glider glider what of the force on the glider does the spring is acting on the glider is holding it backwards so there are two uh two questions so air track glide a glider of mass 0.1 kilograms is attached to the end of a horizontal air track by a spring with a force constant 20 newtons per meter Initially, the spring is unstretched and glider is moving at 1.5 meters per second to the right. Find maximum distance d that glider moves to the right. The first case is when there is no friction. The second case is when there is friction. So first, you have a situation, right? You uh, Again, you decide which side is positive. So I decide to the right is positive. Here is the free body diagram. The force of the spring would be negative, right? And also in the second case, you have a friction. Friction is also negative. So what is the maximum distance d that glider moves to the right? So let's see what we have. Initially, you have initial velocity is 1.5. Final velocity is 0 because that's a maximum distance the glider stopped that's at that point. We also know K is 20 newtons per meter and the mass equals to 0.1 kilograms. So in this case, work energy theorem says work done on a glider equals the change in glider's kinetic energy. So the work done on the glider equals the force times uh, distance, the integral, because the work done on the glider is force of the spring times displacement. Since the two are, has 180 degree angle, so the work done by the spring force on the glider is negative because the force and the displacement forms 180 degree angle. So you have negative one half kd squared equals one half mv2 squared minus one half mv1 squared. So you know all the quantities here you substitute in you should have d equals to 0 0.106 meters. Now, if the air is turned off, you have kinetic friction. Now you have two forces acting on the glider, and both are doing negative work. So here is your still whatever is known plus your mu k equals to 0 0.47, and your uh, friction force is negative. So work done by friction is negative F times D because friction and displacement are 180 degrees and cosine 180 is negative one. You plug everything in, you should have D equals to 0 0.086 meters. Uh, as you can see, obviously this makes sense because when you have a friction, you will move, 
in a shorter distance as when you don't have a friction. Now, work energy theorem for motion along a curved line. When you have a curved line, only the parallel force is doing the work. Perpendicular force is not doing the work. So the work done is the integral of a parallel force, F dot DL. This is a similar thing. This F dot DL, so this would become DL. This is the force in the parallel direction. You will have the same conclusion, which is the total work done because the changing kinetic energy. So in this case, the total work done has to be the parallel force. No matter what path and no matter what character of force, it can be in the same direction, can be in any direction. That force uh, moving in a curved path will equals to changing kinetic energy of the system. So let's take a look at this um, last example. So at a family picnic, you are appointed to put your cousin Gavin in, uh, in a swing. So his weight is W, the length of the chain is R. And if, if you push Gavin until the chain makes the angle theta with the vertical. To do this, you exert a varying horizontal force that start at zero and gradually increase just enough so that Gavin and the swing move very slowly to remain in uh, equilibrium. So first question is, what is total work done on Gavin by all forces? Second question is, what is work done by the tension in the chains? And what is the work done by exerting the force of F? Let's take a look. First, here is the situation. Here is the Gavin, right? Then you draw a free body diagram. So first one, what is the total work done on Gavin by all the force? Well, since Gavin, in the beginning, you have zero velocity. At n, you have zero velocity. So total work done on Gavin has to be zero because he starts rest, he ends at rest. Next one, what is total work done by the tension? Well, tension in this case is a perpendicular to the displacement at every point. So the work done by the tension force on the chains by the chains is also zero. Next one, what is the work done? Work you have to do on Gavin. Let's see the work you have done. Since the work is the work done by you plus the work done by the gravity plus work done by the tension. Work done by tension is zero, we already know. So work done by you plus work done by gravity added together should be zero. That means work done by you, the force you applied is work done negative of work done by the gravity. And work done by gravity is the dot product of the work times the displacement of gravity. Since work is downward and displacement of Y is positive upward. So the, the two has 180 degree angle and the negative 180 gives you positive. So that's work times the displacement. This is your delta Y. And how do you find delta Y? Delta Y is total R minus this segment. And that segment is r times cosine theta so as a um, final answer is w times r times one minus cosine theta that is the work done by you on your cousin gavin okay last question uh test your understanding so here is a conical pendulum if the speed of pendulum bob remains constant as it travels around circle over one complete circle, how much work does the tension do? Is zero. How much work does the weight do? Also zero. Because the, both the tension and the weight are perpendicular to displacement. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.